Hi, I'm Ron Spurenberg, co-founder and CEO of Hi Mama. Welcome to our podcast about all things early childhood education. <laughs> On episode 47 of the show, we talk about different factors that influence the sleep of infants and toddlers with Cindy Davenport, co-founder and CEO of Safe Sleep Space. Safe Sleep Space is an Australian organization that supports parents and educators with sleep and settling for young children. In our conversation, we learn about the correlation between brain development and sleep during a child's formative years. Cindy also gives us some advice for educators that have to settle multiple children at once during nap time. If you are a parent or educator that's interested in understanding the science behind sleep and the relationship it has with infant mental health, then stay tuned to this episode of the Preschool Podcast. Cindy, welcome to the Preschool Podcast. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for having us here. It's our pleasure having you on the show, and uh, I'm excited to learn more about what you do as part of your organization, Safe Sleep Space. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Safe Sleep Space is and what you do? Absolutely. Yeah, Ron, we're delighted to be here. So Safe Sleep Space is uh, an early parenting consultancy group uh, based in, in Melbourne, Australia. And we do a number of different services, but in the realm of assisting all our educators and parents around the issues of safe sleeping, sleep and settling, and, and really importantly, the social emotional health of their infants and toddlers, Ron. So we, we sort of span across the, the baby through to the toddler years, so the very, very important years, and work with uh, lots of different organisations and different um, groups and community groups uh, Australia-wide and, and even internationally. So we do lots of calls. So let's start with the basics. Why is this something that people need support with, uh, the sleeping and the settling uh, for infants and toddlers? Yeah, it's, it's quite well researched in the area of uh, parents often find that they may have a sleep, what we call a challenge. We don't really like to refer to it as a problem, but a sleep challenge with their, their little ones. And it's in the realm of around 40% of all babies. Um, but their parents will have this sort of a sleep challenge. So we know that in the first year of life, uh, a, a parent will seek advice from their health professional, their doctor or their health nurse, around 8 to 12 times. And 40% of those times are around sleep. So it's it's quite um, an issue for parents if they're not getting sleep and they're always seeking advice around how they can help their babies and what we do at Safe Sleep Space is an infant mental health approach. So we don't use the terms control crying or any sort of behavioural approach. We really uh, find it's very important for the parents to understand where their little baby's brains are at and where they're at on that development so then they can help them get some sleep. And we have fantastic results and um, work very closely with our educators to then help their families. So can you explain a little bit more about what that connection is? So uh, the connection between infant mental health and sleeping. Yeah, so we're really, really fortunate now with lots of research uh, by all many, many gurus like Alan Shore and Jack Shonkoff and many uh, of our very well-esteemed um, academics who have provided us with lots of research about babies and their brains. And we know that our little babies need attunement and need very sensitive, um, emotionally attached uh, parenting to help them with everything that they do. But with sleep, it is so important for parents to be able to connect read their baby's cues and then respond to them. And we find that by using these approaches, which is an infant mental health approach, that the results are just outstanding. So research shows us this as well. And for parents, 
you know, they're in the same um, space, if you like, as their babies, walking along that, that journey with them and and getting those results and understanding their baby is really, really key. So for someone with a limited understanding of this uh, challenge, is it sort of the same approach ultimately uh, regardless of the situation you're dealing with as a parent or an educator it, or are there different sort of scenarios that would uh, lead you to take different approaches? Uh, in, look, in essence, um, Ron, the, the approach is, is the same, but it depends on sometimes the very unique situation that a, that a family might be in. So, for example, if a parent is is needing to cue in a little bit more and they may, may even be a little bit more anxious, then we really work closely with those families. It's very individualised, but the actual essence of our safe sleep space approach is is really about listening and cueing in with the baby and responding. So um, to change a little baby's sleep pattern, you know, takes around say a week to, to three weeks, so anywhere on that time. So we work really closely with our parents, helping them with that little change because it is difficult for them to do a lot on their own. So a lot of our uh, information that we assist them with helps and guides them, guides them across that, that period of change. So if they were in a situation making it a little bit more difficult, then we would work um, hand in hand, of course, and and guide them and, and as we we have uh, lots of different resources to help them too so they also um, are very very important so can we dive into the approach uh, one step further so you mentioned that it's really about this concept of first connect then read the cues and listen and then respond can you dive into each of those three a little bit further about what those mean and you know maybe uh, as a parent or as an educator working with infants and toddlers what are the things that I need to do to execute on that approach uh, for the benefit of the infants and toddlers that I'm working with or that are, are part of my family. Absolutely yeah for sure so one of the things we very much start with um, when we when we discuss with we'll, uh, our health professionals or, and or our parents is to ensure that they have that understanding of, of where the baby's brain is at. So the brain, the, the infant brain is only one of the, the organs that um, is, ne- is not fully formed at birth. So for parents, they find that quite amazing. So we put this in the context of, of when a newborn is um, it first arrives or is first born, and this is a term baby, their little brain is about 25% of that of an adult size. Then by the time they reach, you know, their three to their fourth year, their little brain is around 80 to 85% uh, of the size of an adult. So this is what we call those very beautiful formative years, the time when the baby's brain is moving from that 25% right up to that 85% of an adult size. And, and you know, Ron, this is the, the most valuable part about our educators working in this space. They truly are working with our babies at a the, the most prime time. So uh, I I love to say with our educators, you know, they truly are amazing because they're working with our families at a very, very important time. These babies' little brains are, are forming. And if a parent understands that where their baby is at developmentally, they're more likely to be able to understand, you know, what the baby's capable of doing sleep-wise. Um, we get results based around that. So a little baby, for example of an early age at three to four months really has not a great circadian rhythm. So that is, you know, they always mix up their day and night and this is part of their brain little development. And if parents understand that, then they go, ah, got it. I know why, you know, my baby's not, you know, wakeful a bit more during the night than during the day. And, and there's a really good reason for this. It's, it's really biologically adaptive for a baby to be wakeful around the clock because they need to feed. And, you know, it's really important if parents get that and, and understand that, then they know how then sleep fits in. So we we work along that, that sort of space, um, getting the parents and, and the educators to understand where the baby is at for uh, very many reasons. And we also know that by providing 
really sensitive and very attuned parenting, um, being emotionally available, uh, providing those great what we call positive early experiences helps the baby's brain um, develop positive little pathways, neural pathways, and leads to great um, outcomes for the for the infant. So, um, yeah, that's that's one of the very very first parts that we we explain to our to our parents. And once they get that, um, they really also know then where their baby fits. Yeah, absolutely. It's really phenomenal, isn't it? That uh, mm. the brain goes from 25% to 85% in those three mm. to four years. Uh, it just goes to show yeah, absolutely. you yeah, the development. And, and that's why I think so many of us in the field are so passionate about early childhood education because that time frame is so formative, like you say. Um, so that's really neat. So um, the approach makes a lot of sense. And I was just wondering if you can try and bring uh, bring it to life a little bit, maybe with like a case study or uh, a scenario of uh, a, a parent dealing with a, a child, and you know what what cues they might look for, and then how they're going to respond to that. Um, yep, yeah, sure. Look, we we would have many. Um, different scenarios that come to, to us and what we would we would say is we would break it down with our uh, with the family so we would always uh, ask them where the baby is at and and obviously that they're meeting all their milestones ask them about the understanding and and again reiterate that, that the attachment and the emotional bond is is so so key and then the little one who often the scenario will be uh, you know, the baby has been perhaps uh, rocked to sleep or has a sleep association. It's probably one of the biggest problems that we have for our little infants and toddlers. And that is things that the parent has really well-meaningly used to put to help their baby go to sleep. So these could be like rocking them to sleep or feeding them to sleep or um, driving them around in the car to sleep. And then they'll often ring us and say, Ah, oh, the baby won't sleep for any longer than you know a short sleep cycle, and in an infant, a sleep cycle really only lasts about thirty five to forty five minutes. You know that is they go in and out of their deep and and light sleep for this short period of time and and another term coined is catnapping. you know a baby my baby catnaps, and um we would say, "Well, how do you get your baby to sleep and and often they'll say, "Oh, the only way I can do this is by one of those associations." So in the example that we might use, they 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 put the baby in the car, or and they take them for a drive, and the baby goes off to sleep, and then as soon as the car stops and that movement stops, then the baby wakes. And this is really quite common, and we need to explain to our parents that when the baby first goes into sleep, they're so used to being rocked off or using the car, for example, and then when they wake in their light sleep phase, which is after about 35 to 45 minutes, and this, this is for an infant, um, Ron, that we're talking about here, then the baby needs the car or needs the rocking or needs the breastfeeding to go back to sleep. And, you know, if the baby hasn't um, doesn't know anything different. So we explain to our parents that we need to help them to to stop the rocking or the 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 car movements in order for the baby to then drift themselves back into their next sleep phase. And how we do this at safe sleep space is we go very gentle, really gentle. As we said, it, it'll take a week to three weeks, um, utilising. Uh, a very response-based way, so which is a really kind way, and it sits intuitively with the, with with parents. It's a you don't want to hear your baby cry, and we don't use any sorts of of crying. So we are uh, then in this situation would explain to the parent, okay, today instead of putting your baby in the car and driving them, we might just stay and we might rock them gently, and and not till a fully deep sleep. But then we're going to put them into their their little cot or their crib. I think is is what you might might use, and you're going to stay with them and keep your hands on them, and pat with them, and do some shushing, because the two sounds of shushing and and patting, uh, just your parents we explain as well, and and for many educators, 
they've come from when the baby has been in utero. For nine months and, and three weeks, the baby is very used to those two sounds. They've had the, the, the digestive um, juices and the placenta sound, which is the, I can do this, but it might sound a bit funny, but it's a, <laughs> it's a shush, 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 shush. So that's where our shushing and shushing comes from. Oh, interesting. And then, of course, the heartbeat of the mother is the pat, pat, right. pat, 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 pat. So we use these two sort of techniques of, of using our voice of shushing and patting and helping the baby because they're so connected with that sound because they've had it in utero for, for nine months and or more. And they're very, very... Uh, happy with those sounds if you like and it really helps them drift back into sleep so yeah we do lots of this and uh help and guide our parents so instead of using those sleep associations um that they might have got used to like the car or the rocking or the feeding then then we help our parents use these other strategies of, of shushing and patting and very gently then take your hands off the baby and then still stay within sight of the baby and if the baby cries, we ask the parent to listen to the cry. And if that baby, you know, has a full forceful cry, then the parent needs to pick that child up or that baby up and calm them, and get their heart rate down and their breathing calm and then commence again. Or if not, we leave it for that, that sleep and start again at the next one. So very calm and it really sits very, very instinctively with our, with our parents. So... Obviously, these approaches and methods for parents are also very much applicable to early childhood educators out there that are working with infants and toddlers. Mm -hmm. However, uh, as a, an early childhood professional, you're obviously not the primary caregiver for that child. If you're in that scenario, uh, is there any advice you can provide to uh, people in the field that are working with infants and toddlers and experiencing some of these challenges when they're not the primary giver, caregiver, sorry? Yeah, absolutely. And we do this on a day-to-day -day basis with our beautiful early childhood educators here. We uh, very much ask them to have a conversation with the parents first and get to understand little signals or little, little uh, things that, about their child that are unique so that that child care educator can understand the baby there might be some you know little ways that they communicate with their baby or little signals so we very much ask the educators to to sit and have that conversation and it's an ongoing one as well collaborating with the parents so they're all doing the same strategies and in our early childhood um, education uh, system here very much to have a ratio uh, here in Australia uh, our ratio is either one to four in the infant room or um, sometimes even one to three so we understand too that settling you know three or four babies is harder huh it's much harder than settling one so this is one of the things that we work with as well and get the educators to uh, work out the temperaments also of the babies so those little ones with a temperament, you know, temperament is something we're born with and it's a great thing that every baby is unique and has a different temperament. But if the temperament is, is that the child needs, say, winding down or preparing for sleep a little quicker or might take, you know, that second book that you read to them or that soothing lullaby that you sing to them or that calming on your, on your, you know, your lap so you're cuddling them but not to sleep then the educator gets to understand that baby. And then they put the children into uh, a close proximity. So we always suggest, and we, we have a very good model of this um, within our resources, that um, they work together. And instead of, uh, say, patting the baby, which you can't pat four babies, or patting the mattress, we get them to pat their leg in the centre of the four. Or they're sitting in the middle, if you like. They're central to all their babies. So they pat their legs, so they get that same pat, 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 pat sound. And they use that shush, 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 shush. And it really, really works very well. And it, um, the, the, the babies are amazing. They, they really do calm and in that childcare setting and um, working with the parents. These babies settle quite quickly. It's really interesting stuff. I always love 
learning more about the science uh, behind, you know, why different things work in practice uh, when we're working with our, our youngest children. And so it's very cool to hear a little bit more about that side of it um, and sort of that natural, that natural connection. Um, now, obviously, this is a really significant um, thing that people are, are dealing with, parents and caregivers in uh, a child care and early learning setting as well given that 40% of the issues that uh, they're talking to their doctors about is uh, uh, related to sleeping and settling. Now, if I want to go find some more resources or information about a lot of the things that you've been talking about, uh, where's a good place for me to go? Yeah, we're, we're absolutely on our website and we, uh, we have lots of resources and we have free tip sheets for parents on sleep and settling. So that is just simply on our safesleepspace.com.au. But for our uh, early years educators, we've designed and developed an online resource for them, uh, which is a three-course program really about understanding the social emotional development of the baby and then how to settle an infant and how to settle a toddler because we haven't really talked much about toddlers today but they also have some very unique ways that we we can assist them so that's on our website safe sleep space dot education wonderful cindy this has been a really informative conversation and i think definitely some great practical resources for those of you out there that are working with infants and toddlers every day. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Cindy. It's been great having you. Absolute pleasure. And thanks for having us, Ron. Our pleasure. What's your name? Michaela. Michaela. How are you? Hi. You having fun playing? Yeah. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite thing to play out here? Monsters. You like to play monsters? Do you like to swing? Okay, what else do you like to do? Play my Dora bike. Oh, with your Dora bike? Oh, okay. Do you ride fast? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, have fun here.